Hey there, folks. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, this is our my attempt at our annual Mother's Day celebration. Uh, I'd been thinking about it. I'd been thinking about maybe just letting it pass this year because it will look so different this year. But I decided um, God is still on his throne and we are still here. We may not be together, but I certainly hope this reaches you and reaches you well. So I decided to go ahead and put a little bit of something out uh, for anybody who wants to watch this uh, in celebration of Mother's Day. Uh, I hope you guys are all doing well. I've talked to some of you. I know this is certainly different times. Um, anybody who knows me at all knows that I'm an introvert. So I'm one of those people that I'm okay with quarantine. Uh, I'm okay with social distancing. I'm okay with working. I'm still working at school, but usually I'm working by myself and communicating with email and with phone and stuff like that. So as far as that goes, you know, being an introvert, I've kind of been built for this. I've kind of been practicing this for my a whole life. So I'm doing okay as far as that goes. I realize that's not everybody. In fact, one of the persons who lives in my house, my husband is very much the extrovert, and I know he struggled with that. So I think one thing I think God certainly has had a hand in this. One thing I've done with the psychology classes that I teach, this semester I have been moved to work with all three classes that I teach. I've incorporated an aspect of mindfulness in all those classes. And I think God led me to do that for such a time as this. Uh, now, mindfulness, that's one, kind of one of those buzzwords that you hear a lot about now. Basically, what mindfulness is, it's just being present in the moment, being aware of what's going on around you and what's going on within you, basically being aware of your own mental state, not in a judgmental way, like I'm good or I'm bad, just being aware of how you are. And if you're not, if you're not happy with the way you are, the knowing some things that you can do to make yourself more comfortable, to make your self be able to go through whatever it is that you're going through to make things more easy for you. Uh, and one thing that I've uh, talked with my students about are, are some tips, some things that they can do uh, to make their mental state better. Because we know that your mental state affects your physical state and vice versa, your physical state can affect your mental state. And one thing that I've done with my classes, I've done it for several years, but I've even put more emphasis on it this year, thankfully, uh, was meditation and yoga. I've done that with my students and I've even expanded my own personal yoga practice. And that has been such a blessing. The word yoga actually means yoke. And you can think of it one or one or one of two ways, or you can think of it both ways. You can think of it as yoking your spirit with your physical body uh, and doing things that are good for both. The meditation portion of that, slowing your heart rate down, and then the movement of yoga, the strengthening of yoga, that's good for your body, and then the stillness is good for your mind. Or you can also look at it in yoking your own spirit with the Spirit of God. Because I know when I'm in yoga, I spend a whole lot of time in prayer. When I'm in any kind of exercise, whether it's running or walking or yoga, I spend a whole lot of that time in prayer. And that's a good thing too. Um, but yoga, I do like to think of it as yoking my spirit, yoking that again with God's spirit. And in yoga, there are really two parts of it that I enjoy a lot. Part of it is the stillness, and then part of it is the strength. One of my favorite strength poses is called Humble Warrior. I'm not going to do it for you now, so don't worry about that. But what Humble Warrior is, your your legs are a certain way, and then you hold your body up, hold your body up, and your arms are behind you, and then you bend down at your waist. And it sounds like, well, you just stand up and bend over. Well, no, the way you hold yourself, it takes a lot of strength to hold yourself up. And as my yoga teacher, Sarah says, you don't dump down in the pose, you have to hold yourself up. But you are bending over, you are a warrior, but you are a humble warrior. And it's that's a very difficult pose, but when you do it, you really do realize the strength that it takes to be humble, to be completely humble. And when I think of that, that reminds me uh, of Micah. 
Micah 6. And I want to read a little bit of that to you right now, if I can find it. In Micah 6, people are talking about, you know, what can I do? How churchy can I get? How much religion can I give God before God is pleased with me? How many sacrifices can I give God to make him happy? Uh, going back to Micah uh, 6, verse 7, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, uh, with 10,000 rivers of oil? If I do all this church stuff, if I do all this religious stuff, Will that make God happy? If I'm a really good, uh, if I follow all these rules, is that going to make God happy? Uh, but then in verse 8, it says, He, being God, He has showed you, oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Meaning, it's not all about you. It's all about God. So, don't worry about checking off a list. Worry about how you treat other people. Treat people right. Be kind to them. Love mercy and walk humbly with your God. That's what it's all about. That's what this walk is all about. In the New Testament, I think of James. James talks about being humble as well. In James 4, I'm going to start in chapter 4 of James 4. Don't you know that friendship with this world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Those are some strong words. If you are a friend of this world, then you're an enemy of God. Or do you think that Scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us envies intensely, but he gives us more grace? And that's why the Scripture said... God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That, that's convicting to me because sometimes my, I let my pride get the better of me. But God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, God, then, to God. Resist the devil and he will free, flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. We do a lot of hand washing now. But wash your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double that means washing hands, not to get rid of germs, but for purification. Do, get rid of the sinful nature. Get rid of your love of the world. Get rid of that. And purify your hearts. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. That doesn't mean that God wants you to be sad all the time. That means that worldly things that make us happy, putting our emphasis and our priorities on worldly things instead of godly things, that's what we need to wash our hands of. That's what we need to change. Make We need to make our will God's will. Submit our worldly desires to him. Be humble and then he'll lift us up. That's And I'm preaching that to me because that's something that convicts me all the time. One thing I think that's been good about the current situation that we're in, and I'm concluding myself, is just we're really good at being busy and think that if we're busy, we're important. And equate being busy with being good or being important, and that is just not so. Nowhere in the Bible is that more evident than with the story of Mary and Martha. And I know we did a class several years ago on Wednesday night for ladies that talked about having a merry heart in a Martha world. But so, so often, I'm a Martha. And this has really, this quarantine situation has been a blessing to me because it has made me slow down. Uh, reminding you about Mary and Martha. This is in Luke 10, starting in 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. She sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. So she had her priorities right. She was listening to God. She was there among all the men, sitting at Jesus' feet, taking it all in and listening. But... Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. 
She was making important things that truly are not important. And that's what convicts me. That's what I'm so um, prone to do. Getting busy with things that really, in the grand scheme of things, are not that important. So she was going to tell. She was going to tell Jesus on her sister and make him make it right. But it didn't work out the way she thought it would work out. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And then Jesus said, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and that won't be taken from her. And I love the way that he's gentle with Martha. He's correcting her, not shaming her. And that's why Jesus just kind of set the world on its ear with the way he treated women. He didn't shame her. He, he, he loved her, and he was showing her a better way, the way that Mary had already picked, which I love that story. Um, being still is hard. Again, part of yoga is being still. Part of our life every day should be being still. Back when I was able to go to refit class on Wednesdays, we had a song or that we would do an exercise to, and I love it. It's based. It's called "Breathe" by um, Johnny Diaz, I think. And there's part of that song that just uh, convicts me every time. And I'm going to read. I'm not going to sing it. You're welcome. I'm not going to sing it, but I am going to read the lyrics to you. This is kind of for the middle of the song. I'm busy, busy, busy. And it's no surprise to see that I only have time for me, me, me. There's got to be something more to this crazy life. Ah, that is so us. That is so me. Before all this happened, thankfully, I, you know, through God's strength, I have slowed down some. But how many of us is it just all about us? Again, there's, it's, I only have time for me, me, me. There's got to be something more to this crazy life. And praise God, there is. I'm hanging on tight to another wild day. When it starts to fall apart, in my heart I hear you say, breathe, just breathe. Come and rest at my feet and be, just be. Chaos calls, but all you really need is to take it in and feel your lungs. It's the peace of God that overcomes, just breathe. Let your weary spirit rest. Lay down what's good, Martha's. Lay down what's good and go find what's best. Oh, that kills me every time. That convicts me. And I hope that that brings some perspective to your life too. Just God will be there if we will just be still and reach out and listen. He's going to be there. He always is. Finally, In addition to being still and to being humble, I want to leave you guys with Psalm 46. I think it sums it up nicely, more nicely than I can. It's Psalm 46. Psalm 46 is also a song. And it's just as convicting, I think, as breathe is. But it's also very reassuring. God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Children's Church, this week we talked about courage and having courage and not fearing because it's mentioned so much in the Bible. And here it is again. We will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its, wa excuse me, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord the desol desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. 
He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. I hope that brings you peace. And until we can all be together again, be still, be humble, and be well.